with that, I will call this meeting to order. I believe everyone is here. Um, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, one nation, nation God, under God, indivisible, indivisible, indivisible and justice for liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Present. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Gray. Council Member Gray. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trachis. Council Member Harder. Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Your motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of March 31st, 2020. So moved. Second. Fitch. Second from Councilman Fitch. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion. The March 31st, 2020 journal is approved. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters this evening, so we will move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one, seventh district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number two. Receive, file, and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. Is there a second? Second, Councilwoman Days. Second from Councilwoman Days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number three. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number four, fifth, first, second, and fourth districts. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number five, first, fifth, and sixth districts. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Item number six. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion through item number eight, and that will be the order. Item number nine. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number 10, first district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Please read the add-ons. Other communications, item number one. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Two sixth district. Receive file and the county councilor <clears throat> be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Report of the county executive. Here we go. So, okay, I'm going to share trying to share my screen and it's not going to take. Okay, technology. Should we try this? On the screen where uh, you should be able to see your face. Yes. Right above all the people, there should be several buttons. I see them. You may have one that looks like a box with an arrow pointing out the top. Yes, unfortunately, it's not lit. And perhaps um, in the interest of time, I will offer to attach my video report to the end of these minutes and will um, not uh, walk through my slideshow, which I had prepared, which I can't, apparently I can't share. So uh, we will attach that <clears throat> for people to view, and I will email that to the council members for them to view because it looks like my share ability is not going to engage. So I have nothing further to report, Madam Chair. 
I'll attach my video to the end of your council meeting. Can you can you please make sure that the video report from the county executive is recorded into the journal? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, there is no report of special committees. We will move on to public forum. A few reminders for folks. Um, only comments that were sent to council comments at stlouisco.com on the day in which the meeting was today, at least an hour before the meeting is set to start, will be reported into the public record. Um, folks can email their name and address and comment to that email address, which is posted on our website. The email must be 400 words or less, which is the equivalent of three minutes of communication which is what we usually allow per person during normal council meetings. And then um, the administrative director or a designee will read your comment out loud during the meeting and it will be recorded in the journal. I want to remind everyone that again, when submitting these comments electronically, you are expected to uphold the same standard of decorum that we anticipate during a regular council meeting. Thanks again to everyone that has helped us get this new public forum process set up. Madam Clerk, Please read the comments. <clears throat> Chair, we have five public comments this evening. The first one is from Ralph Heasley at 712 Florence Avenue, Webster Groves, Missouri 63119. Subject is closing county parks. I disagree with your decision to close St. Louis County Parks. My partner and I are retirees in the high risk population and visit these parks regularly to get out much needed daily exercise and to enjoy nature. Visiting these parks provides a boost to our mental health and a sense of well-being. Visiting these parks enriches my life. This decision to close access to parks denies a much needed lift for people and especially seniors who have been practicing isolation social distancing, hand washing, and other guidelines advise others around us to do the same. We have not witnessed people breaking social distancing guidelines in the parks. I think that denying access to parks is very little to, park to reduce person-to-person -person contact and takes away a much needed venue for enhancing mental and physical health. An alternative that would be more acceptable is to require all visitors to wear masks. Also, I and many others often ride our bikes on Grants Trail. Closing Grants Trail and putting all of these bikers on city and county streets increases the risk of traffic accidents. Allowing bikers on Grants Trail should not be a virus transmission issue. It is easy to maintain social distancing on a bike. I urge the council to reconsider the closure of county parks and allow people to responsibly enjoy our wonderful parks. Next comments are from Tom Sullivan, 751 Syracuse, University City, Missouri, 63130. Madam Chair and members of the council, due to the difficult situation brought on by the coronavirus, many companies and organizations have been cutting the pay of those in top positions who make the highest salaries. I think St. Louis County should do the same. This would be especially appropriate in the county executive's office as there are so many on staff and they make considerable salaries. The latest hire in the continually growing county executive's office was in February February for another new position, Deputy Chief of Staff at $95,000 a year. I do not recall there ever being a Deputy Chief of Staff before. The same as many hires in the County Executive, Executive's Office, the new Deputy local experience, but apparently none in government. Given all the outlandish spending in county government, and the ever-increasing taxes that have been placed on residents, do not even think about a tax hike. You need to match government to the amount of revenue taken in. Surrounding counties are run much better and much leaner than St. Louis County government and with fewer taxes. Thank you for listening to my comments. Were submitted by Maria Chappelle Nadal, 33 Dartmouth Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 631. Given the chaos that took place at animal control under the direction of Spring Schmidt, Mr. 
Foundation, are you willing to put your medical credibility online to assure that she is competent and experienced enough as a non-medical professional leading up this pandemic charge? Here's your test. Before answering that question, please review the data in North County. Furthermore, now that we know that $175 million is coming from the federal government, please do not make the same mistakes that occurred in Ferguson. Systemic racism is still very much alive in every institution in policies and actions that intentionally ignore vulnerable Good evening and thank you for hearing me. My name is William Pyatt. I live at 7184 Christopher Drive in St. Louis County. This past week it came to our attention that after a neighbor encountered someone doing work at 7190 Christopher Road, that a new owner had purchased the property and halfway house for people with eating disorders had purchased this property. Most of us hearing the news thought, no way, this can't be true. We live in a residential area with no businesses. We were able to confirm this week that the St. Louis County Planning Department has come to the conclusion that a business such as Monte Nido qualifies to open in a residential area. As a resi residential owner, I strongly disagree with that interpretation. According to the County Ordinance 1003.107, number two, section 11, it states that group homes for the handicapped by not more than eight individuals, excluding supervisor personnel, et cetera, are an approved use. I won't go into legal concerns of this ordinance and this proposed business. I'll leave that for the lawyers. But I will lay out a few things that someone from the county would, ha would have even looked at the proposed business website. It should have put up red flags all over the place. For those of the for those of us who live off Christopher Road, choose to buy choose to buy our home in a residential area for the sake of the neighborhood. Our community is a place for kids and families to enjoy their surroundings without businesses. For instance, we aren't allowed to run a lawn care businesses, heating and cooling businesses, or in-home hair salons in this area. Or at least we thought we were not in the first place. It is my position that St. Louis County has entered a gray and gray area by sending the signal to Monte Nito that their business is an acceptable use at 7190 Christopher. The ordinance calls for group homes for the handicapped. I believe the intent that excuse me, I believe the intent of that is for handicapped to be allowed to have a place to stay for the intention and a wouldn't see a business. In the lawyer, involves clients, physicians, family therapists, physicians, family therapists, and a large staff, all on a one to three month revolving door basis for a profit. I believe that handicapped homes provide a home for those in need and are served by nonprofit organizations. That comment is from William Pyatt. Next citizen comment is from Jason Myers, 10702 Lisa Marie Court, St. Louis, Missouri, 63123. Public libraries should be available for curbside, curbside pickup or some sort of social distancing protocol. With people in their homes now, they need entertainment, education, and family time more than ever, and not everyone can afford Netflix, Hulu, etc. Not everyone can afford to have board games available or books to assist with kids homeschooling. And what, excuse me, and what about the parents that depend on the library for those families that homeschooling, that are homeschooling full time? People depend on this service and it should be reinstated. If restaurants can do curbside pickup, so can the libraries and the employees of the public library need to work even if they're still getting paid, which I don't know if they are or not. People need normalcy of going to work as much as possible. Public parks should not be closed. I see no data that led to this decision, only anecdotal statements about stopping the spread. Parameters of assembly are in place and that should be enforced. Park rangers can ask people to disassembly if there are too many too close. That's the solution, not just closing them outright. As a nearly daily user of Grant's Trail, I get rarely, excuse me, I rarely get within six feet of people. Excuse me. I tried my best while shopping yesterday, but encountered more people within six feet and five minutes of shopping than I did in three weeks of using the trail. As someone that works in the mental health field, people need sunlight. They need recreation and need to be able to take their kids to a park. Not every family has a backyard, 
Not every family has, not every kid has room to run outside. Kids need that daily. And walking the streets is not safe for little ones. We need to figure something else out other than simply closing them. Jason Myers. Chair, that is all the written communications. That concludes public forum. Please proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 95 introduced by Council an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $115,000 from the St. Louis Jefferson Solid Waste Management District, appropriating the same for support of a regional St. Louis household hazardous waste program and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 96 introduced by Councilmember Clancy an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Thomas Gantner for the provision of medical examiner forensic software services for the Office of the Medical Examiner. Bill number 97 introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance authorizing the Director of Revenue as trustee to grant a permanent easement and a temporary construction easement to the Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District on, over, and under a portion of land acquired at the 1994 tax sale for construction storm project. Bill number 98 introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the executive or as the county executive's designee to execute a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, FY20, annual to St. Louis County being designated a sub-recipient of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act funds awarded to the Missouri Department of Economic Development Division of Workforce Development. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Proceed with perfection. Bill number 20, introduced by Councilmember Harder. Please hold. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number five, Council Members Fitch, and harder. I move to hold bill number five. Bill number five is held. Bill number so member Traeger. Please hold bill number 32. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 36 introduced by council member Fitch. Move to hold bill number 36. Number 36 is held. Bill number 76 introduced by council members Dunaway and Harder. I move to hold bill number 76. Bill number 76 is held. Bill introduced by council member Trakis. Move to perfect bill number 89, please. Second. There was a second from Councilman Harder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 89 is perfected. Bill number 90, introduced by Council Member Clan. I would like to add that Councilwoman Walton Gray has joined the meeting. Bill number 90, I move to perfect bill number 90. Second by Fitch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 90 is perfected. Bill number 91 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 91. Second. Second, Councilman Gaze. I believe I heard Councilman Harder first. Second from Councilman Harder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 91 is perfected. Bill number 92 introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. For the perfection of bill number 90. Second, Councilwoman Davis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 93 is perfected. I believe that was 92. That was 92. 92. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Well, number 92 Aye. is perfected. Introduced by Council Member Walt. I move for the perfection of Bill number 93. 
Councilwoman Days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Bill number 93 is perfected. Bill number four introduced by Councilman Lancy. Move to perfect Bill number 94. Second, Councilwoman Days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 94 is perfected. Moving on to final passage. Room 20, introduce Member Clancy. I move to hold Bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Substitute number two for Bill number 385, introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to hold substitute bill number two for bill number 385. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by council members Trakness, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Move to hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Bill number 81 introduced by council member Clancy. <clears throat> Bill number 81. Second. Roll call, please. Or I think I heard a second from Councilman Trakis. Roll call, please. Council member Days. Aye. Council member Dunaway. Aye. Council member Fitch. Aye. Thank you. Council member. I think we lost her on the video. We'll move on to oh, council member. I can hear. I mean, I can see myself. I think we're going to need to proceed. We do not have your video on our screens, councilwoman. We just saw it for a second. I was going to say I can see it. It's on my phone now. Please proceed. Council member Clancy. Hi. Member Trakis. Hi. Council member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on bill number 81, there are six ayes. Bill number 81 is finally passed. Bill number 82, introduced by Council member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 82. Second by Fitch. I heard a second from Councilman Fitch. Roll call. Councilmember Days. Aye. Councilmember Dunaway. Aye. Councilmember Fitch. Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Clancy. Aye. Councilmember Trakis. Aye. Councilmember Carter. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 82, there are six ayes. Um, everyone, uh, the, uh, Councilwoman Walton Gray is visible on the multi-screen. I can actually see her. Yeah, I was gonna say I can see myself as well. I, I think the public can see her as well. I think it's okay for her to vote. I I can see her. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. We'll go back to Bill Number Eighty One, Council Member Gray. Your vote. Aye. First bill. Okay, so on Bill Eighty One, we actually have seven ayes, and we just voted on Bill Eighty Two. If you could give me your vote, Councilwoman Gray. Aye. So, Madam Chair, Bill Number Eighty Two had seven ayes. Bill Number Eighty Two is finally passed. Bill number 83, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 83. Okay. Call, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. There you go. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. 
Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 83, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 83 is finally passed. Bill Number 84, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill Number 84. Second by Fitch. Bill call. Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Fitch. Aye. Thank you. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Kiss. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Here on Bill 84, there are seven ayes. Bill number 84 is finally passed. Bill number 85, introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. I move for the final passage of Bill number 85. Second, Councilwoman Days. Roll. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Member Mitch. Aye. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill 85, there are seven ayes. Bill number 85 is finally passed. Bill number is by Council Member Walton Gray. I move for final passage of Bill number 86. Second, Councilwoman Days. Roll call. Councilmember Days. Aye. Dunaway. Aye. Councilmember. Aye. Councilmember Gray. Aye. Councilmember Clancy. Aye. Councilmember Trakis. Aye. Councilmember Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill number 86, there are seven ayes. Bill number 86 is finally passed. Bill number 88, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill number 88. Second, Councilwoman Gray. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 88, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 88 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions. Chair, we have two resolutions. Resolution Number One, introduced by Council Member Clancy. Please read the resolution. Resolution number one. It is recommended a transfer of PPE, sanitizing supplies, and accommodations to properly isolate first responders who have been exposed to the COVID-19 virus during the current state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the recommendation of the county executive is based upon the need to protect the health and safety of St. Louis County police officers in order to allow them to safely and effectively fulfill the mission of the police department, as well as to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows. Section 1. The amount of $1,500,000 is hereby transferred from the emergency fund to the police department for support of the cost of personal protective equipment, PPE, sanitizing supplies, and accommodations to properly isolate first responders exposed to the COVID-19 virus. I move for adoption of resolution number one. Second. Second from Councilman Trakis. Please call the roll. Councilmember Days. Aye. Councilmember Dunaway. Aye. Councilmember. Aye. Councilmember. Aye. Councilmember Clancy. 
Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Carter. Aye. 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 Resolution number one, there are seven ayes. Resolution number one is adopted. Resolution number two, Council Member Trakis. Move for adoption of resolution number two, please. Second by Fitch. Call the roll. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Clancy. Aye. Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on resolution number two, there are seven. Resolution number two is adopted. Unfinished business. Appointment will be held on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number two. Appointments and reappointment be held on the order of business, and that will be the <clears throat> order. Third district. Receive, file, and exercise the council's power of review and refer the matter back to the Planning Commission in accordance with the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. So ordered. Item number four. The appointment be held on the order of business and that will be the order. Number five. Appointments be held on the order of business and that will be the order. Item number six. The appointment be held on the order of business and that will be the order. On to new business this evening, Madam Chair. We have one prepared order in the matter of the request of the records manager for permission to destroy certain books, papers, and records of various county departments and offices. I move for the adoption of order number one. Second by Fitch. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. That brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second from Councilman Trakis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. You, you too. Tonight, we're going to discuss the St. Louis County response to the COVID-19 epidemic and how we would prioritize our CARE Act federal relief for our St. Louis County community. This slide shows the total cases to date. We have 1173 total cases, 144 new cases in the past 24 hours, and 24 lives lost. The number of COVID-19 cases has grown uh, exponentially over the past uh, two weeks, and we can see that here in the dark blue line in, that, in this graph. The bottom light blue line is the number of daily new cases and we can see that growth as well. The age distribution of the COVID-19 cases makes what looks like a relatively traditional bell curve with a higher distribution uh, age 50 to 59, and then uh, another peak in the 20 to 29 year range as well. Uh, this next slide shows a zip code map um, uh, emphasis in northern St. Louis County and West St. Louis County, but we expect this to fill in over the coming days and weeks as the virus spreads in our community in a more traditional manner. Um, this uh, just shows the initial impact um, of the virus in our community. COVID-19 deaths tend to be predominantly male as this first chart shows. Um, the overwhelming um, number of, of, of people who do not survive a COVID-19 infection have chronic medical problems. That's what this second pie graph shows in dark blue. 
And then the third shows the age distribution. Um, the, uh, as we would expect, the older patients tend to do poorly with the COVID-19 infection, and that's why our resources are pointed in that direction. This crisis has uh, three pieces. It is a public health crisis, it is a humanitarian crisis, and it is a subsequent economic crisis. St. Louis County has three priorities to save lives, to help our residents meet their basic needs, and to revive the local economy. And that's what I'd like to focus on tonight. Saving lives has two points. First, to flatten the curve, and second, to increase our health system capacity. Flattening the curve is a traditional public health approach. Prevention, through all of the uh, methods that we've discussed, and then testing and isolating patients that have been diagnosed or are presumptive positive with COVID-19. Our health system has worked in a very coordinated way to increase their resources, increase their capacity, and uh, work cooperatively together. Uh, so prevention on the public health side includes um, our hotline services by both our public health agencies and our hospitals, our website, stlcorona com where most of our information is gathered, our communications with the media. There are some billboards in the community as well, a social media presence in informing the public as to the proper um, things they can do to help themselves and where they can get services, and then our conversations uh, with stakeholders. This shows the volume of calls through our hotline over time. We can see that start to fade as uh, patients are able to access our hospital system information services and are also finding information through our website and social media. Visits to stlcorona.com continue to be robust. Uh, one day uh, visits on April 6th were 5,997. The total last week was over 57,000. The total last month, 146,000. Flattening the curve has been what we've talked about the most, and those are through our social distancing measures. We've limited crowd sizes. We've limited restaurant services um, uh, from dine-in and only allowing takeout and delivery services and curbside services. We've limited non-essential activities, and then most recently we were forced to temporarily close our parks in St. Louis County. This shows the travel through Google Analytics in our community in St. Louis County. Uh, retail uh, travel is down 45%. Transit station travel is down 59%. But in the upper right hand, we notice that travel to our park is up 87%. And we knew that would increase following actions taken in St. Louis City to limit access to the parks and uh, the action by the state of Missouri to close some of their parks. Um, we expected crowding to increase in our parks soon after that, and that was one of the reasons why we were forced to temporarily close. The test piece of uh, flattening the curve has been uh, difficult in this national environment of extraordinary limited testing. Um, we have worked to expedite screening uh, following the CDC guidelines for testing. Um, we've worked vigorously to access more tests through our resources and we have worked aggressively to make sure that testing however limited was available equitably in our community we continue to quarantine and isolate appropriate individuals patients who have tested positive or who have symptoms and are presumed positive are um, given isolation instructions at home and if necessarily necessary then we have resources to isolate them or quarantine them in a hotel, which we have done with some of our first responders and some of our um, patients who don't have a place, such as our homeless population. This next slide shows our testing locations in the metropolitan region, including St. Charles County, Franklin County, and St. Clair County. Um, these also show the St. Louis City and St. Louis County locations. As you can see, these are relatively evenly distributed, um, working very closely with our hospital systems. So building our health system capacity has been one of our top priorities. Um, not only increasing the number of 
hospital beds, but ICU beds. One of the first strategies deployed by our health systems was to um, stop elective surgeries, to make room in their hospitals. They have recruited extra medical personnel and have worked very hard to acquire uh, supplies and equipment. Uh, the, our hospital systems are working very closely together in a coordinated way to increase data sharing, to streamline policies and procedures, and to um, uh, coordinate their activities and keep track of their ICU capacity and ventilator capacity. Um, we have created the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force through our health systems to provide us with a single point of contact to coordinate hospital activities and to work with our um, public health systems. Leading that effort is Dr. Alex Garza, who is a chief medical officer at SSM Healthcare and a former chief medical officer of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security in the Obama administration. St. Louis County's first priority is to save lives. We have initiated that through first community awareness and communication, establishing and enforcing social distancing policies and isolation and quarantine practices. The health system has worked to make testing available in our community, to make sure those tests were distributed equitably, and to build the health system capacity and coordinate their efforts. This shows the uh, traditional curve of an epidemic. Uh, the dotted line across the top is the health system capacity prior to the uh, techniques and adjustments that have been made to increase capacity within hospitals and the adjustments that we have heard about um, through the St. Louis Pandemic Task Force. Our second priority is to help our residents meet their basic needs. This means food, housing, safety, physical and mental health, a special attention to our vulnerable populations, including children, seniors, uh, those in uh, senior living facilities, uh, individuals with disability, and uh, uh, people without a place to live. So as we watch our curve on our effort to meet uh, basic needs, we can lay that on top of the epidemiologic curve for COVID-19 infections and in cases. Um, as we see um, the initial rise of the curve, that's when our, our residents need the most help. Uh, we are planning appropriately and we understand as uh, we get to the other side of the curve, we can start to open up uh, our travel into community and ease restrictions. And uh, we will um, continue to focus on basic needs, but we would expect those resources to be adjusted. Our third priority is to revive the economy. That means invest in our workers and workforce development, support our local businesses in the recovery to make sure we're using our county resources to match our local businesses with federal support in the Stimulus Act, and then reboot our government services, uh, make sure we're providing the services that are needed to support our economy and uh, restore us back to our tr traditional operating level. As we see um, in this slide, um, we, we mark the curve for the epidemiologic trend, helping our residents meet their basic needs is the bottom blue line, and then we begin our efforts to revive the economy. As the case count starts to fall, we can ease restrictions and start implementing our um, task force that is dedicated to the economic recovery. The Federal CARES Act um, provides funding for the response to the COVID-19 academic. And we will be watching liquidity and financing through federal programs that we can help match with our uh, small businesses and other employers. And then there is also support for transit, um, our transit agencies to make sure that um, uh, our residents have a way to get to work and to get to school and to support workforce development and a return to full employment. Uh, the state is currently um, working through the Federal Stimulus Act, appropriating that at the local level through various programs. Uh, St. Louis County has the benefit of being able to access the federal treasury direct, directly, uh, but we also recognize that so much of our programming is coordinated regionally 
and our regional partners will um, will depend on the state appropriation, which we expect to move very quickly, and uh, we'll be working with them in a coordinated way, just as we are in the pandemic response on the public health side. So to review, the St. Louis County approach to this pandemic is to save lives, help residents with our basic needs, and revive the local economy. Thank you. Thank you.